salmon, Chinook salmon, and steelhead are all listed under the Endangered Species Act here in Northern California. A massive recovery effort is now underway to bring these magnificent fish back from the brink. Salmonid habitat is surveyed and restoration sites are identified and improved. In order to gauge our progress in meeting our restoration goals, a reliable estimate of population is needed. This may involve trapping salmon as they migrate upstream to spawn. Okay, he's got Species and sex can then be determined. White gums, white on the inside of his mouth. Right. And he doesn't have a knob. This, this is the knob right here. Okay, that is the knob. That's it. So this is a male. Yeah. For this mark recapture study, the fish is tagged Please. in case it's seen later during a spawner survey. Check the tag. The operculum is punched and saved as a genetic sample. Seventy-five. It's then measured. And that's the length to the fork in the tail. And scanned. Does not seem to have a pit tag. <laughs> Finally free to go, upstream of the weir. Permanent weirs have been established on some creeks, like the ECS, on the south fork of the Noyo. Another way to go is a temporary weir, like this one on Casper Creek. But whether permanent or temporary, the tools of the trade are the same. What we have here is a, a floy gun. This is used to uh, apply floy tags to each fish. An operculum punch. This is used as a secondary mark to punch out a unique pattern in the operculum plate of each fish. We have forceps for taking scale samples in envelopes, which is where the scale and tissue samples go. Along with the operculum punch, scale samples are taken to determine the life history of each fish. With each sample saved and its data recorded, our scientific knowledge grows, as does the chances for our salmon and steelhead to make a full recovery. So let's take a closer look at this process with the Campbell scientists at the Pudding Creek Weir. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to shut these gates just so we have all the fish inside the, the fish ladder and they don't escape when we start to close down the, the actual gate. Because once the flow stops, they kind of freak out and they want to go back out into the open water. So. also on the right side. And scan your fish to see if a pit tag was inserted as a juvenile. And after the fish has had a chance to recover, let it go. Now let's move underground to the ECS. Use some water to wet down all the surfaces just in case the uh, fish flops away. It won't be great to get skinny dry surfaces.
Now in any mark recapture study, there's the marking, which you just saw, and the recapturing, or reciting, which is what we'll be doing on our spawner surveys. Survey reaches can be anywhere from 8 kilometers and floated in kayaks, or a few kilometers and walked on foot. Surveys will take you to some beautiful yet remote areas of our north coast. So bring your field partner and a map. Now out in the field, these fish can be observed and their species and sex identified. We can also observe if the fish had previously been tagged and in this way estimate their population. It takes experience to correctly identify a fish from the stream bank, but try and get a good look at the inside of its mouth. If it's all black, it's a Chinook. If it's all white, it's a steelhead, and if it's black with white gums, it's a coho salmon, like this one, which I'll call a male due to its pronounced kipe and deep red color. Any reds found on a survey reach will be recorded, measured, and flagged, the purpose being to estimate red area so that the data can be used to differentiate the species that built it. The depression dug by the female is called the pot, and the gravel that accumulates just downstream is called the tail spill. Take care when measuring a red so as not to disturb any incubating eggs that may lie beneath the gravel. All right. Now let's listen as Ace of Spade measures this red. Pot length is 1.2 meters. A width of 0.6 meters. Pot depth can be determined by taking a measurement just adjacent to the pot and then subtracting it from the depth in the middle of the pot. A depth of 0.2 meters. Looking at the gravel size most predominant in the pot, a sample is taken and measured. length of the tail spill is then measured. Tail spill length of 1.8. Measure the width of the tail spill in two places. First one third of the distance down from the top of the tail spill. One is 0.6. And then a second time, two thirds down. And width two is 0.45. And the tail spill substrate Record this information on flagging and tie it securely in a spot that will be easily seen by the next crew to survey this reach. For all reds, record its age, record number, species code, total red length, the year, and the distance and direction from your flagging. This data goes directly into your PDA. Now let's see if we can find some fish on the North Fork of Casper Creek. We found our first fish of the day, two in fact, and they look to be on top of a red. A 
At this point, after evaluating the fish for some time, we'll assign it a record number and enter the data that we've determined about it into the PDA. This fish's record number will be today's date, 0115, plus its identification number, 001. It's the first fish we've seen on the reach today. The smaller jack will be 0115002, and the red that this fish is digging will be 0115003. We've moved positions in order to get a better look at both fish. From here, we've determined that the larger fish does in fact have a floy tag, and we'll want to record that it's all blue. What I'll do now is hold out my measuring stick so that I can get an estimate of how large I think each fish is. I'm going to call the larger one 75, and the smaller one about 40. Data collected from REDS can then be correlated to population estimates from our mark recapture survey. So that even on streams without weirs, we can get a reliable estimate of salmonid population from red surveys alone. With sound science and a commitment to habitat restoration, salmon and steelhead will once again reclaim their rightful place in our Northern California streams and rivers.